Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing Conceptual Learning. We at Clary Concept Platform are here to solve all your engineering concepts and make you aware about the fundamental principles behind the engineering topics. Okay. So visit our website claryconcepts.com for more such engineering videos and conceptual and on, on engineering concepts. So today in this lecture, we are going to talk about the rotameter. Now we are all aware that flow measurement meaning what is the amount of fluid flowing through a pipe is really essential parameter to monitor mainly in the process industries where there are a lot of pipe network which are available for fluids to transfer the fluid from one location to other location. And as an engineer you must make sure that the specific amount of fluid is flowing through particular pipe at a particular flow rate. And in, or, in order to make sure the flow rate, in order to measure the flow rate, there are various devices available today. So we have seen venturi meter, we know what is orifice meter, they are all the devices which are mounted in the pipe to measure the flow rate. Today we will talk about another device called rotameter which is very very interesting and very simple. Now no calculation required to measure the flow rate using rotameter. So let us see what is that. So rotameter is simple this device, this is the real image of rotameter. What you need to do? The pipe where the flow rate is to be measured, you simply let us say you have the pipe like this. Or you can say the, for example, a pipe like this. But here the condition is rotameter has to be installed in a vertical length of the pipe, right? This is a pipe, for example. What do you do is you simply break the pipe, cut the simple portion, and insert this over here. So this bottom portion will be at the bottom pipe will be connected here, and top pipe will be connected over here. So your fluid will flow through this rotameter. Now, if you see a rotameter, there is a scale given to you. And in rotameter, there will be a float. This is called a float. The component that you see of orange color is a float. What will happen? The moment the water starts flowing through it, the float will start rising. And it will stop at a particular location where the flow rate is given to you. So like for example, depending on the value of flow rate, the float will occupy its own position in the entire length of the rotameter. And depending on the position of the float, you can measure the flow velocity, uh, the flow rate is so and so liters per meter or so and so meter cube per second, right? Now question is how do float gets itself adjusted depending on the flow rate? So let me share some of the physics behind this. What happens is this pipe that you see in rotameter is not of constant cross-sectional area. It is of varying cross-sectional area. So for example, if, you, if I draw the cross-section, it is something like this. The cross-section is varying, right? So as and when the float moves upward, the area is increasing. Now float has a specific diameter, something like this if I am not wrong, right? This is the float. Now if you look at the, the area available for water to pass through, this is three dimensional float, right? For an area available for water to pass through, the area is this much only, from here and from here. So all the water will pass through this annular ring in between. Now let us say at, at some flow rate, the float is over here, let us say Q1 is the flow rate, right? Now if you increase the flow rate. What will happen is the float will change its position and will come to another position. Let us say float is now at this position for a higher value of flow rate. Question is why this float is changing the position and how does position reflects the value of flow rate. Let me just give you a hint. Now let us say if you look at the float and its mechanics, when the float is floating at particular height, it is acted by two forces. One is the force because of its weight that is W and another is the force because of the water which is in the upward direction which is your let us say drag force FD. Now value of drag force basically when float is floating it is always the case when drag force is always equals to W weight and weight of the float is always fixed. So that means the drag force is always fixed when it is floating. Now the value of drag force basically will be dependent on the velocity of the water flowing over and above the float. So let us say corresponding to this drag force there is particular velocity of water V which has to be flown across the float so that the float get particular drag force and therefore it is countering its weight and it, it floats in the, in the stream of the water. Now let us say that at some instant of time the float is at this position, flow rate is Q. If you increase the flow rate what will happen is the velocity from the section in the annular ring, if I look from the top, the top looks like this. This is the section of the float. This is section of let us say for example the rotameter and there is a annular, sorry, there is an annular region 
that is the annular region in which the water from which the water will flow through the water will flow through the annular ring annular ring right now what will happen the moment you increase the flow rate the velocity with which water is passing through the ring will increase when velocity will increase drag force will increase when drag force that means upward force on the float increases against the weight the the moment the drag force increases the float will start moving upward and now when it start moving upward what will happen the annular region from which water is flowing is also increasing in area the moment the the floats get settled at one another position at this position let's say it is q2 now what happens is the region over here the annular ring the annular area from where the water is flowing is larger that means again the float will settle at a position where the velocity will again become v because area increases velocity will obviously going to reduce right so therefore at another position of float the velocity will remain the same but area is larger so now that is how the relative position of float in this pipe will reflect the q so higher the position higher will be the q right so that means this is used to measure the flow rate let me show you one interesting video and an experimental performance measured by one of the professor and this is i have taken this from practical guru youtube channel you can see this is rotometer okay and this is a float of rotometer this is a annular tube and this has the gradual increasing cross sectional area you can see like this right both of them you can see over here it is rotating right and depending on the flow rate it is taking its position if you increase the flow rate it will come up it will rise if you decrease the flow rate it will settle down on its bed clear so this is how rotometer is used to measure the fluid flow rate flowing through a pipe i hope you understood how the rotometer position is linked with the flow rate value and therefore if you see this tube rotometer directly comes with the marking on the scale so depending on the position of rotometer you can easily say that if rotometer is somewhere over here you can say the scale marking is at a 6 that means 6 liter per second is the or 6 liter per minute is the fluid flow rate clear thank you so much i hope you understood how to measure flow rate using rotometer see you soon in the next class thank you